Alrighty, so uh, over the last couple of days uh, during live streams and just asking in comments and everything, uh, a lot of people have been asking which character should I LR first? Um, or not necessarily first, but next. So I kind of want to give my thoughts and opinions on the four that we have in the game right now. Obviously, you can see I do not have Margaret on my account just yet. I get her next week. Uh, but if you watched the video that came out yesterday, as at the time of this one coming out, then uh, you will know that I did play with the character on Gon's account. He does have 17 million box CC and everything, so it's kind of a different experience and everything uh, compared to a regular player, but at the same time, I think it was a pretty decent insight on how the character actually works and, you know, how, you know, how good they will actually end up being. So, Let's start with the very first one, which is LR Meliodas. I actually think this character was really, really good. Um, I don't think that he's necessarily bad in really any scenario. Um, maybe, like, he's not great for, like, Demonic Beast or stuff, but I even have used him for, like, Bird and a couple of different scenarios where he's actually been pretty helpful in PvE content as well. Uh, the main thing with this character is... The Holy Relic is a really big part of his kit because it increases the hero's damage dealt by 10% for every orb in the hero's ultimate move gauge. And because you have uh, his single target card, which increases ultimate move gauge and everything, and you know he ranks his cards up when you get crit, um, having high ultimate move gauge and doing extra damage is kind of a big part of his kit. So the Holy Relic does help quite a bit. Um, originally when he came out, I didn't think it was like that big of a difference, but you know, doing an extra 50% damage, and on top of that, whenever you get your ultimate, it gives you an all stat boost of 20%. Um, that is quite a lot of stats that you get. That is quite a lot of damage that you can deal. It's really, really, really hard to live a maxed 6-6 ultimate from this guy. Another thing is his ultimate. You do kind of want to have good dupes on this character. He has a secret technique card, so it's necessarily, or not necessarily about the dupes. Sometimes it can be more about the RNG of the cards that you have in your hand. If you have more cards for him, he can do obviously a lot of damage and everything. But overall, I would still say that he's a pretty solid unit. I really like Lost Vane. I really think that he was a great choice for the first LR. Should you get him? Maybe. <laughs> his his PvP potential is there. You can kind of go for like an ult rush build with him if you want to. The Sins team is obviously uh, utilizing him pretty well. Um, not sure how long the Sins team is going to continue to be in the meta. It has been meta for a couple of months at this point. So depending on what the November festival and the December festival end up being, they could end up pushing the uh, the Sins team out of the meta a little bit. We'll, we'll have to see, of course, how it kind of shifts with the new characters coming out. But I would say overall, he's a really good candidate if you have him and you have some decent, you know, investments already into him. Um, would I go for him first? Maybe not. I don't think that he's that useful as far as like the overall like well-roundedness of the character. Uh, the next one we got was LR Escanor. <clears throat> this is the one that I see a lot of people asking about whether I should get LR Escanor or LR Margaret. I personally get a really good amount of use out of Escanor. Um, he the biggest downside to this character is you have to have an entire human team. The subslot unit can't be anything, you know, other than human. I went up against a guy today using an LR Escanor team, but he had uh, Festival Zeldris in the back, which completely ruins his entire kit, because the idea is that you put these Eternal Flame stacks on the enemy, and then you do more damage to them, plus his single target card gains Blast, which does extra damage per Eternal Flame stack. So if you're not applying those Eternal Flame stacks consistently, like you can whenever you have a full human team, he falls off pretty hard. So that is a really big part of his kit. He is very restrictive in the fact that you have to run him with a full human team. That being said, he hits really hard. He is incredible. He has a buff removal card. He applies ignites, which make you do more damage in general. His ultimate is a single target, which can be a little rough. Um, you know, obviously sometimes you know you don't want you want to have if you're gonna rush for an ultimate with a character. Normally you want to get like a big AOE ultimate or something like that. But depending on the teams that you're going against, um, this is pretty much gonna be guaranteed to kill. I I don't know for sure about lower ult levels because this guy has been in the game since like month three or four uh, he's been in the game for a really long time that's why i have him maxed out um i don't know about lower ult levels so if you're a newer player and you can lr a character and maybe you just haven't pulled this guy as much because he's definitely not on as many banners as he used to be um maybe that will play into it if you have a lower level uh lower ult escanor and you have him lr let me know how your ult performance is on that in the comments if you would but um <clears throat> Still a very, very strong ultimate. Lowers crit resistance, hits very, very hard. It's going to be pretty much guaranteed to kill a single character. 
So that is, of course, very, very nice. The only downside about Escanor is his Holy Relic is pretty bad. Um, overall, he got this, you know, not, I mean, not too long after the... Um, the Holy Relics were already a thing. Like it's, it, he he got his Holy Relic a couple of months in, if I'm not mistaken. It wasn't too long after they uh, they came out. I think it was even a Bird Relic. I'm not 100% positive on that anymore. But his his Holy Relic doesn't really help much of anything other than give him some CC and a little bit of extra damage, just because I mean he does have defense and it's going to scale off of it a little bit. Um, but overall, I would say that he is a very very strong candidate. I use him primarily for event bosses and stuff like that like the current one that we have right now we have the indigenous purgatory creature which is uh the cricket i can literally one turn both phases with him and roxy on the team like him by himself i i mean if he doesn't crit then it can be a little bit less uh you know good but um you know these these event bosses typically nowadays have a lot of crit resistance and stuff like that so roxy's kind of carrying me through that but having a full human team for a lot of these bosses and things is very very helpful even for final boss um, I was using LR Escanor to farm the highest difficulty just because he does so much damage I was using this team but I had Levi in place here um, and honestly it just works out really good I mean honestly you could probably use Jenna too because you do need to t technically like remove stances and stuff I guess but um, I like Levi for just being able to infect and everything but I get a lot of use out of him for or out of him for PvE content surprisingly um, and I really like the human team for PvP, so it's kind of a win-win for me. Obviously, if you don't have the other humans to kind of run with him, it might not be as valuable to you, but, uh, yeah, you do want to make sure that you're running him with a full human team. I know a lot of people run him with, like, Transcendent Bond, uh, they'll run him with Arthur, they'll run him with Roxy, uh, they'll just throw somebody in the back that's a, a human, whether it be Halloween, Easton, whoever. Uh, if you have some decent options for him, he is a very, very good character. Um, next up we have the LR Elizabeth. LR Elizabeth is a very, very interesting one because she is technically a seasonal character. She was a year one New Year's character. So the biggest problem with that is that you're not going to be able to pull many copies of her because she's not going to be on a whole lot of banners. As you can see, I'm a day one player and I only have her 2-6. So that is probably going to be a very big, uh, you know, factor when it comes to it you might not even have the character so if you don't have them obviously you cannot lr them um if you do have them even at one six i would say it's completely worth it um i do really think that you know having the higher ult levels and stuff helps a lot because the attack related stats that you gain from using this ultimate is a really big part of uh, some people's use out of the character uh, i know that people use her for like guild boss and stuff like that a lot more recently and i think one of the biggest reasons is that not only you're getting this really nice passive out of it but when you use the ultimate at 6-6, you get 50% attack related stats, which is a really big damage boost, which equals more score most of the time. So that can be a big factor. So do keep that in mind. Even at 2-6, I, I still think that she's fantastic. I get a pretty good use out of her in guild boss. Um, I use her, of course, on my Nidhogg team. You can throw her on the other demonic beast teams if you really want to as well. She also does very good in those. Um, just depends on the team that you're using really overall. Her holy relic is kind of nice. I think this is a deer relic, so it's not very hard to get. Just kind of adds on to her kit a little bit, so nothing too crazy. Um, her flood card, uh, it now has flood on it, but it used to just heal allies. The fact that it's flood is a little weird. She's pretty good at like healing back up and stuff like that. So you're normally going to have a decent amount of HP on her unless they're just like really focusing on the, you know, hitting your Liz. But uh, this card has surprisingly, you know, done a lot of damage sometimes when I use it. Like it really does kind of throw me off guard sometimes how much this card actually does damage wise, uh, which is obviously great because the more damage it does, the more you're going to heal your allies with it, which is really, really cool. So the other thing is the buff card. This buff card is actually really nice. I didn't think it was going to be all that crazy, but the fact that it just removes buffs on level 1 is nice. You're using it for a cleanse, and you're getting defense-related stats out of it, which makes you tankier, which is fantastic. Honestly, it's super, super good. Everybody that I hear talk about LRs and stuff like that, as soon as they're like having... If they're having trouble with Nidhogg, or the dogs, or the deer, or the bird, as soon as people end up LRing this character, I always get comments about, you know, hey, I was having trouble with this boss, I got LR Elizabeth, and she completely carried me I'm able to beat you know much more than I was before so um, I do think that she is very very helpful I think the biggest factor here is that she has a PvE 
passive on the top here, and then the rest of the game modes get this smaller passive down here, um, which is allies' recovery rate increases by 20% whenever the hero heals an ally. This is actually pretty good. I mean, 20% is no joke, and the fact that it maxes out at 5, which is a 100% recovery rate, makes it really, really easy to heal back to full. Um, and on top of that, you're you know being able to ult rush with her because you're going to gain orbs and everything from using cards and stuff. She's really, really good. I really do like the character a lot. Allies' basic stat increased by 60% or 6%, uh, up to 30% whenever the hero heals an ally. So I mean, just spamming that attack card and stuff gets you, you know, so many extra stats and everything. She's really, really great. I really can't stress how much that she is very, very helpful. I have seen some people say that they don't really care for her. They don't think that she's that big of a deal. Um, I, I do genuinely think that she is a, a really nice character to have. Like, she makes all the difference in Nidhogg for sure. Like, if you could already beat Nidhogg before she came out, it's probably not going to be a, a huge game changer for you. But, um, you know, for people who can't beat it at all, she's going to give you a lot of stats. She's going to heal. She's got a cleanse, which a cleanse is pretty important because Nidhogg put those on a lot of debuffs from, you know, random phases and stuff like that. So that can be helpful. Um, it just depends on what you need. If you're in the late game PvP, E side of the game and you need help with it she is a hundred percent worth getting um, and then last but not least we have the new Margaret uh, I'm not really a fan of the Margaret I'm sure a lot of people have already voiced their concerns personally I don't think that she got changed enough to make the biggest difference which is a bit unfortunate I think if they would have waited a little while they could have given her more meaningful changes but overall I don't think she's bad she does get a huge CC uh, increase I think if you're if you end up having the LR Liz already and you want even more support for Nidhogg if you don't have maybe Summer Margaret and you just want to LR this character uh, and use the blue one, you definitely can. I've used uh, the blue one in place of the, the Summer Margaret on my Nidhogg team a couple of different times, and uh, she's honestly still very, very nice. So, the basic changes that happen is her charge card gains a crit resistance lower, so it becomes a debuff card, which is kind of interesting. I'm not a huge fan of that for the PvP stuff. Uh, it, it doesn't really feel like it makes the biggest difference. Plus, if you end up doing like a mirror match against another goddess team, goddesses can't be stat lowered if they have Mael on the field, so it, it, this card ends up just becoming a regular charge card again, which is kind of unfortunate. So um, the ultimate, on the other hand, uh, her ultimate is kind of a big factor. I'm not 100% sure if you have to 6-6 six, six the character to like to have the additional effect or anything on it. I'm assuming that it still gains... Um, the effect, which if you don't know, it basically makes it to where whenever you use the card, it lowers all enemies, um, or I think it increases all enemies damage dealt by up to 50% at 6-6. Six, six. I'm not sure exactly what the scaling looks like on it, but um, Margaret already has an effect where if you have her 6-6, six, six, she disables all of the enemy's skills for two turns, which is very strong, and I, because I personally have just had bad luck pulling Margaret, I don't get use out of that, so it's... For me, I don't think that it's really, like, if I was struggling and I needed to choose between two different LRs, the fact that my Margaret is only 3-6, I'm not, I don't even have the disable part of it, I would need to ult rush to even get, you know, use out of it in the first place. The level 1 of this card doesn't get changed at all, and then the level 2 and 3 just basically increase the values of the, uh, the boosts that you get, um... So it's nothing like game changing, and then on top of that, uh, whenever you cleanse debuffs off with her cards, uh, she's going to increase goddess allies, uh, I think it's crit damage and crit chance by a, a pretty small margin, up to like 6 times or something like that, I can't remember, maybe it's 8 times, but it, overall she's just not... A, a big enough difference for me to really recommend it to you. Even using her on Gon's account, which had 17 million box CC, it really didn't feel like she was like over the top crazy worth getting, you know? So if you're stuck at a point where you're like, hey, the Margaret's like brand new, obviously the new shiny unit is always very enticing for some people. If you're missing any of the other ones, depending on what value you can get out of them, I would probably recommend grabbing one of those first. Um, if you need PvE help, grab Liz. If you need PvP help and you have a human team, grab Escanor. He's great. If you want to use him for like PvE activities like I do sometimes, it honestly helps like blow through some of these event bosses and stuff very, very fast. So it's like a really nice convenience sort of thing. Um, and then if you want to use either the Sins team in PvP, you want to ult rush with him, or you just want to try to use him for random PvE activities as well, because he can be kind of nice. Uh, the Demon team is still pretty viable for the most part. It's not like the most usable right now, but 
depending on what you know kind of happens in the meta in the near future he could end up becoming more useful in that scenario too but uh, i would say he's probably like a little bit lower on the list i would definitely recommend grabbing liz escanor maybe melee if you have his holy relic or you have him like you know six six or whatever and then maybe martyr at last so that's my personal opinion on it let me know your thoughts and opinions on the characters yourselves you know let me know if you have any really good use cases for them or you know hey i get you know I, I really like the character because of this. Uh, feel free to let me know, because, I mean, obviously this is just my opinion. I have used all four of them at this point. Obviously, I'll get Margaret next week, so I'll be, you know, kind of messing around with her a little bit more on my own account and getting a little bit more familiar with her. But so far, she doesn't seem super impressive. But that's pretty much it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed the video. Like I said, leave me some thoughts and opinions down below, and I will see you tomorrow.